everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm gonna be doing a full review on the new Makeup Forever foundation. This is called the HD Skin Hydra Glow. Makeup Forever was kind enough to send this to me in PR, so I did receive these in PR, but that's not gonna have any influence on my opinion on this foundation. I've been wearing it for about a week and a half, so I really know how I feel about it. In this video, I'm gonna be doing a 12-hour wear test. Also, I'm gonna be doing a six hour daylight check-in where, where I take you guys outside, zoom you guys in real close, let you guys see what it's looking like out in the natural daylight. Now, before I move on to the information about the foundation, up here on the screen is an image of my age, my skin type, what I like and what I dislike in foundation. I always feel like it's important for the audience to know what the person behind the camera likes and dislikes when it comes to complexion products, especially foundation, because we all have different needs from our foundations. So I feel like that information is important. I will also list that information down in the description box down below, along with shade references, I will list popular foundations out on the market and what shades I wear in those foundations so you guys can get an idea of my complexion. This foundation retails for $47 and you do get one ounce. Now this foundation is available at multiple retailers. If you order from the Makeup Forever website, if you enter the code GLOW, you will receive this sponge for free if you order this foundation. They sent this sponge along with the two bottles of foundation and I'm obsessed with this sponge. So it's a pretty good deal. Um, I think the sponge is $18. So the information on this foundation, it is claiming to be a 24 hour hydration and glow foundation. It is claiming to be undetectable, making your skin look like skin, but better for a flawless radiant complexion. It is 86% skincare base. This offers a buildable medium coverage with a creamy lightweight feel. This foundation is ideal for normal, dry, mature, and sensitive skin types. This foundation comes in 38 different shades. That's what's available on the Sephora website. I'm not sure if there might be more, but anyway, they sent over shade 2N26 and 2Y20. I've tried these separately and the best results that I get is mixing them. So if you guys use me as a shade reference, I apologize for that. So these are the two shades that I will be mixing and wearing throughout this video. I will also be doing shade comparisons of these two foundations next to other foundations I have so you guys can see how the shades compare. So that's pretty much it for the, all the information on this foundation. Let's go ahead and jump into the application and I will see you guys all in my final thoughts. have a really busy day today and today is the perfect time to do a full day wear test on this foundation. Uh, so right now it's 1119. I have been wearing this foundation for about a week and a half now. I've been trying to get to this video and I just really have been, it's been busy. Anyway, today is a perfect time to do a wear test. So that's what we're going to do. So I like to put a little bit here on the back of my hand. So I like to first just go in with a brush and put on an even application all over and then push it in to the skin with a sponge. Because it is that glowy type of formula, it looks best when I push it into the skin with a sponge. I mean, it's not the perfect shade match, but it's not bad, it's doable. Um, the shade's fine, it's the undertone for me that's a little off. So I like to just put like a nice even layer all over the face. Then, I've been loving the sponge by the way, so Makeup Forever sent over the sponge um, with the foundation and oh, it's such a good sponge. Now it does have this part where you can put on the foundation with this and then you know push it in the skin with this side. For the last couple of months, I've been using my eight times mirror um, to apply my foundation and boy, do I get a way better longevity with my foundation. When I look at my skin with an up close mirror, it just allows me to really see how the foundation looks and if it's too thick in certain areas, if it's not blended in certain areas, I highly recommend getting one of these. It's a lifesaver. And I apologize if you can hear that noise. My husband is right above me 
vacuuming. <laughs> He's uh, vacuuming in the kitchen with the Dyson, so it's really loud. I apologize for that. I don't think he knew I was coming down to film. So this is one even application. Now, right here are like my, my trouble areas where I have some like acne scarring and hyperpigmentation and stuff right along that jawline. So I like to go in and put a little bit more in those areas to maintain the coverage throughout the day. I've noticed with this foundation that I will lose coverage in those areas. But it is one of those formulas where it's forgiving if you wanna go in with a second layer over those trouble areas. Okay, so that's it. I'm gonna leave it there. For the wear test, I didn't put on any primer. I put this straight over my moisturizer that I put on like 30 minutes ago. But I will probably powder it, um, especially in my T-zone area, just because I like that area to be a little bit more on the smooth side. But I won't powder everywhere else. So I will keep the perimeter and like the chin area and all around here with no powder. I'll just powder like right here in the center. So that's it for the application. I'm gonna go ahead and finish the rest of my makeup and I will see you guys in my next check-in. Okay, so I am back to do a midday daylight check-in. I am in my husband's truck right now. I had a bunch of appointments I had to do today. And typically I use a camera, a specific camera that I do this kind of footage with. And I went to pack it with me to come to do my errands and I don't know where all the batteries are. So it's been a minute since I filmed and all that. So I got to look through all my stuff and see if I can find it. But for now, I'm just going to use my phone and hopefully it will pick up my makeup. We'll see. Right now it is 534. Let's go ahead and do some close-ups here. So this is this side. I'm gonna try to come in as close as I can. This is looking. I'm gonna do the front part of the camera and I'm also gonna do the back part of the camera. Sometimes the front facing camera always makes you look a little bit better. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip the camera around and see if that footage is useful. So hopefully, let me look in my rear view mirror and see if that's, oh yeah. I can use my rear view mirror to look and make sure I'm in frame. Let's go ahead and zoom in. This is the back part of my camera on my phone. Then maybe do a close up on the mouth. Normally around my mouth is where I get like the most wear. And then forehead. Hopefully that footage was helpful. I apologize. I'm sure the audio is not near as good as it is with the camera, but you know, sometimes we have to make do with what we have. So that's it for this quick daylight check-in. This is five hours in. Normally I like to do six, but it's um, you know, it's going to be dark here soon, and I figured I might as well capture it while I can. Um, so this is five hours worth of wear. So that's it for this check-in. Let's go ahead and jump into the swatches. And I'm going to show you guys the two shades that I have compared to other shades that I have from other foundations. And then we will get into my 12 hour check-in and in my 12 hour check-in, I will share my full thoughts on it. So I will see you guys then.
All right, we are back. This is my 12 hour check-in. Right now it's 11, 12 at night. So I'm just almost to that 12 hour mark and I am exhausted. And as you can see, <laughs> it's been a day. So I'm gonna go ahead and zoom you guys in so you guys can see how the foundation looks 12 hours later. And then I will jump into my final thoughts. So as you can see, my face is quite shiny, right? My eye makeup is just a mess. I even used the Giga Black from MAC. I couldn't think of what it was called. And I still just have so much mascara underneath my eyes, but whatever, I'm getting ready to go to bed anyway. It doesn't matter. But you can see I've started to lose some of it along my hairline. It's just, I can't even touch my face. It just removes at this point. So I just have the other lights on, but I turned off the ring light. And what I look for is right here on the center of the forehead and it's starting to kind of lift and pull away. So if I touch my face, so I touched it right there, you can see, and it lifted the foundation. So that is, that's the kind of foundation this is. It starts to kind of look a little bit cakey and a little bit heavy on like the orange pill area. So that's something to take note of. This foundation for me gets more and more red throughout the day. And the shade 2N26, which is supposed to be like a neutral shade, this has a lot of red in it. And I'm not sure if you guys noticed in the swatches and comparisons of these two shades, but this shade has quite a bit of redness in it, which is kind of surprising um, because it's supposed to be neutral. I just wouldn't expect it to have that red undertone, but it definitely does. And as the day progresses, my face starts to get more and more red <laughs> throughout the day. Um, but yeah, so like, you can kind of see where I've even just touched my face. I just, it starts just pulling and lifting from my face. And you can see those scratch marks. That's that's the kind of foundation that this is. So now that we've done the close-ups, let's go ahead and jump into my final thoughts. Okay, I have so many thoughts about this foundation, so I'm just gonna jump into it. Number one, I like this foundation, but I'm not in love with it. I have a lot of foundations in my collection that are that skin glow type of formula, which I really do like. I do need to powder. I would say right now, typically my skin is more dry in the winter. I have more seasonal uh, dry skin. However, this year I've had a pretty decent year as far as my skin not getting too dry. And this foundation kind of becomes a little bit too much glow. It doesn't really stay on me. Like I would say I get a decent eight hour wear out of it, but right around that eight to 10 to 12 hour mark, it really starts to break apart and it really starts to kind of lift and pull away from the skin, which is what I don't like in a glowy foundation because I think a glowy foundation is beautiful and I want it to wear off naturally because a lot of us are not wearing our foundations for 12 hours, but there's a lot of people that do. And for those of you that need a 12 hour wear, and you like that glowy foundation, I don't get that out of this. I don't love it after that eight hours. After that eight hours, it starts to get a little bit greasy on me. But there's a few days that I tested it with the Tom Ford uh, Traceless Soft Matte Primer. This wore really well with this foundation and I felt like it kept it a little bit more intact. Like I had a little bit more longevity with it with a primer, um, like a mattifying primer, then I do just putting it on with nothing. Now I did powder the center of my face and you can definitely not even tell I did that. I powdered right here on the chin, right here and right here. And this foundation just really absorbs the powder because it does have a little bit more of that emollient type. I have a lot of glowy foundations that I absolutely love. I would say my number one favorite glowy foundation is the Healthy Glow from Chanel, the Le Beige. This is just one of my ride or dies all time favorites. It's just so gorgeous and it wears off really natural. Um, it's just such a beautiful foundation and it's very forgiving and it doesn't get heavy and kind of gunked up in 
the uh, orange pill area quite like this one does, which is another thing that I don't like about this one from Makeup Forever. It just gets just a little bit heavy in those areas. Another glowy foundation that I absolutely love is this one from Makeup by Mario. Um, I feel like this one just lasts so much better and so much longer and it fades real natural, a little bit better than this one does. Um, and also I just love the Skin Veil from Hourglass. This one is also just so beautiful. So here's the thing, I like it but I'm not overly in love with it. If you like Makeup Forever, let's just say that Makeup Forever has been a really good line for you because I do know that a lot of people just love their HD line. If you have like an exact match, like a shade match in Makeup Forever and you know that's a good shade for you, I think you could make this one work. Like I think it's workable and doable if you're looking for that glowy foundation. But for me, I'm just not like, living for it. It just, on a scale from one to five, I'm just kind of giving it like a three. It does give you decent medium coverage. It is glowy. I would definitely recommend it for those who have dry skin, but, um, and possibly mature. I would just get a, I would just be careful like on the orange pill areas. I feel like this wears pretty decent on like wrinkles and stuff, but I wouldn't say that it wears well over the orange pill. But the only claim that I feel like it doesn't live up to is the longevity. It's not a 24 hour wear, it's not a 12 hour wear. I would say it's like an eight to 10 tops. Um, there are things that you can do to make it last a little bit longer. Like I said, a nice soft matte primer to put underneath it. There's things that you can do to make this one better, but I still don't love it as much as I do some of the others that are my all time favorites. The most recent foundation I found that I am absolutely in love with is this one from OG. It's a, it's a stick foundation. This one is so gorgeous and it wears off so natural and it doesn't break away like this one does. Like it doesn't start to get kind of pulling away from the skin and just pulls apart because that's what's happening on the center of my forehead right here. When it, when the foundation lifts from the skin and separates, you can't touch it. Like the oils just break up the foundation and that's what I feel like this foundation does. Then even though I'm not dry, I would say I'm more normal right now. But when I wear this foundation, I start to feel like I have oily skin because it's almost too much hydration for me. But if you have really dry skin, you might really like this one. Um, there's just others that I prefer over this one, but it just didn't wow me. And like I said, it's an okay foundation, but I have so many others that I absolutely love. So those are my overall thoughts. Sound off down below. How many of you guys have got this foundation and what is your experience? I love it when you guys share your thoughts, especially when it differs from mine. It's so important for everybody to see that in the comment section. The next foundation I am wearing is this one from Christian Louboutin. I've wore it twice and yeah, so I'm gonna get this review up fast because I've already wore it two times. I'm gonna wear it for two more times and then I'm gonna put up the video. So be on the look for that coming up. That's it for this review. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me in today's video. I hope you guys all have a wonderful day and I will see you guys all in my next video. Love you, bye.